Hi, it's Kerner Tex here again with the eighth part in a series of videos about building Beyond Linux from Scratch 8.4. So, this session's uh, almost exclusively going to be about building KDE for um, Linux, the K desktop environment. Um, there's quite a few parts involved with KDE. There's the um, uh, frameworks part of it, there's the plasma part of it, and then there's um, apps part of it. So um, let's start by getting our browser up. And a terminal. Top up behind there as usual. And this will be our main building. Uh, right, I found out I've not been using this control. <coughs> Excuse me, shift. Because it wasn't seem didn't seem to be working, but I realised I was using the um, keypad plus, and it's not that plus; it's the plus on the main keyboard next to the backspace. So, should protect. Yeah, that's working now. That's too much. Okay. So um, we need to go towards the back end of the manual, and it's. Section 7 KDE, and as it says, there's a comprehensive de desktop environment with a huge number of applications written for it and a huge number of users. It's based on the QT framework. For more information, visit the KDE project site at kde.org. So let's start by going into our sources folder and VLFS. And once again, just to keep things together, I'm going to create a KDE. Uh, directory just to keep the KDE related um, packages that we install in this section together. So, introduction to KDE again, it says comprehensive desktop environment, it's got two main blocks the library is called the frameworks or KF5, and the desktop environment called KDE. Or Plasma 5. Sometimes this is referred to as KDE 5. Um, it's it's only this version, I believe, that's been referred to as Plasma or Plasma 5. Um, in the past, KDE used to be just referred to as KDE 2, 3, or 4. Um, most applications written by the KDE team only use the, the frameworks and do not need the Plasma environment. So, the Plasma environment is the desktop, it's like the look and feel of the system so it's not necessary but it's part of the whole package if you want a totally KDE environment you would install that as well which is what we are going to do so the first thing we need to do is load some extra CMake modules now uh, I'm just going to check that we may have already installed this for something else so let me just check that. Extra CMake modules, yeah, 5.5, .5, so we have. So as that's part of the KDE installation, it's from KDE, I'm actually going to move that into here. Just for completeness. So that's one package we don't need to do. So the next one is phone on, and it's the multimedia back end for KDE. So this needs CMake, which we've got, we've used that before. Extra CMake modules, you see we've got it already. Glib and Qt5 we've got. And then it says at least one of the phone end back end streamer or phone end back end VL VLC needs to be installed afterwards for multimedia operation in KDE. 
So let's do the phone on back end. I think it might be the next. Yes, it is the next option, the next package to be built. So as long as we bear in mind we just carry on, that, that should be okay. Pulse audio is optional, we've got that anyway. So let's fetch this package. And we've got some switches here. So this is explaining the release for the build type to apply higher level of the compiler optimizations. And the other one is to ensure that QT5 version of the library is built even if QT4 is present. Well, we haven't got QT4. We haven't built it, but it's there. So we'll just copy it as it is. Okay, so that's built. We can install this now. Okay, that's done. We're going to phone on back phone on back end G Streamer. So it needs G Streamer, which I'm pretty sure we've got. Yep, that's there. <clears throat> um, it says you need at least GST plugins base and one of good bag and uh, ugly or libav plugins. Well, I believe we've got all of that except for the ugly package. So um, it's probably not a problem that we're not going to install it. I thought we did have to install that at some point, but maybe that's later on. But it is, it's not a problem. At least we've got, as it says, at least one of these additional packages. So that's quite fine. We've got the GD requirement. We've got the object introspection recommended. And I think we've got the first three of these GTK, GSL, GTK dot optional. So that's more than fine. So let's fetch this. So this is G Streamer. Oh, what have I done here? Oh, I've clicked the wrong link, haven't I? Oh, I've clicked down the wrong tab, more to the point. Yep, so let's go home. That's one annoying thing about this. Uh, Sea Monkey has got a shared close button, so it only closes the active tab rather than you looking at the tab and clicking the X next to that particular tab. So that seems to have caught me out a few times now. Right, so this is the one we want G Streamer, we've got X, Lib XML2, we've got, and Phone on we've got. Plugins Base, okay, yeah, so that's what I thought. I thought Ugly was uh, one we would have to. Uh, install so let's fire away at that one first things it's recommended so we've got a lib a library here to install these two we've got and there's some optional ones there so lib a 52 let's grab that let's come out of the KDE and fetch lib a52 okay it's only called A52 
Um, got some extra configure explanations here, so um, yeah, it's just explaining that there's slightly different switches needed for uh, 64 bit, so some C flags are added, disable so static, uh, that's it. So I think we can just copy and paste the configure and make a command. And now we can install. And that's done. So now we can do the GST plugins ugly. no extra config explanation so we'll just copy and paste in and as before there's some freeform text fields there if you so wish to modify them Install it. And that's that one done. So now I've got the phone on backend streamer to build. So I'll go back to KDE. Fetch that package. Oh, um, okay. It's uh, a different directory name from the archive name, which is not normal. That's better. So, again, we've got similar switches as before for the config, so uh, just take the config command as it is. Okay, and we can install it. Done. So now there's a backend for VLC. Um, now, as it said, uh, oh, right, okay, I didn't realize we did this one tab. Let's go, let's do this again. As it said here, you need at least one of the G Streamer backend or the VLC backend. There's no harm in having both installed. Now, uh, we don't have VLC installed, but I'm going to install it just to put this side by side with the G Streamer one. So I think we've got all these dependencies. Lua, yeah, we've got Lua. T 
so we can just go ahead and install this so again loads of options for it if um, you want to make full use of this So some commands here, um, disable OpenCV, so that's been set, um, it says that OpenCV is not compatible with this version, disable VPX, the latest version is not compatible with this version of VLC, so we've got that, uh, let's copy that actually, let's do this set first, get that out of the way and then copy this configure in case there's anything else we want to add. So disable Lure, we haven't got Lure installed, we have. Disable MAD, if you don't have LibMAD installed, I'm pretty sure we've got that one. So let's just double check. LibMAD is there. Disable AV, AV Codec and disable SW Scale. Use these switches if you don't have FFmpeg installed. Well, again, I think we have that one. Yep. Disable A52 if you don't have LibA52 installed. Just install that. XCB if you don't have X Windows installed. Again, we've got that. We've got the ALSA. And we've got LibGcrypt. So, we don't actually need anything else. And again, there's a note there saying... You can check the configure help output for a complete list of options. So again, if, if you've got a library installed and it's not been picked up, you could probably force it in or force the configure to see it uh, if it's in an unusual place, for example. Um, but we'll just take this configure command as it is. Okay, so we can just start make to build this now.
Okay, so it's built successfully. We can install this package now. Okay, and as this note says here, um, we can improve performance by updating the icon cache and the desktop cache for this package. So, <clears throat> as the super user, we can put these two commands in, and that should be VLC completed. And if you ever want to use it, we should be able to find it under. Okay, I would expect to see it there, but it's not there. Okay, that's strange why some of these things aren't appearing. Let's try the. Um, which one of these options was it? Preferred applications, no, not that one. Uh, um, I can't remember which one of these it was when we got the list of applications up now. Application finder. There you go. So, VLC. There it is. So maybe it's one that's got to be added manually to the menu. Uh, okay, so that just allows it to collect network data. So you may want that ticked. Uh, so as you can see, it's a media player, another media player. Um, and so it's got a back end, which um, we're, we've obviously installed this for, for the multimedia back end for phone on, which we shall now install. So if we go back to the KDE subdirectory we've got and download and install this package. So same two switches as before for the phone on apps we've seen or packages we've seen so far so we can just accept the, the default configuration. Okay, and we'll install that package. So that's done. So the next package we've got is Polkit QT. Requires CMake, Polkit, and QT. Well, we've got all of these. Let's just get these ticked. So let's just verify that. 
to be sure. So C make we've been using anyway. Poke it is there and QT. <coughs> So let's now fetch this package. And we can install it. Okay, so one of the there's only one of these switches here this time, but it's the same as before. We want the release version for for the optimizations. one lib dbus menu qt needs qt optional doxygen for the api documentation so we're not concerned about that so we can just start by downloading and extracting the table okay so a slight difference in the package and the extracted directory name package has got qt underscore and this directory is qt hyphen right so that switch is the same as we've seen already and then with doc equals off to avoid building an API which is what we want because we haven't got doxygen installed so we'll just copy and paste that Okay, that's built. Let's install it. And that's done. Okay, so that's the preliminaries done. We're now are in a position to install KDE Frameworks 5, which is, if you like, the core part of KDE 5. So K5 can be installed in slash user or slash opt K5. The BLFS editors recommend the latter in the BLFS environment. So we're going to install it in opt K5. One option is to install KD Frameworks 5 into the user hierarchy. This creates a simpler setup and makes it more difficult to try multiple versions of KD Frameworks. So I saying if you wanted to upgrade this in the future, um, I believe it does get updated fairly regularly. Um, if you went down this uh, path of installing in user, you'd find it extremely hard to install a, a more updated version of the frameworks. So we can skip that export command and we can skip this profile configuration script. Um, you can see it's all uh, user. We, we'll, we'll go with the recommendation that the BLF editors, BLFS has editors have recommended. Um, if Qt5 was installed in user, then the Qt5 the lib portions of the above paths may need to be changed. Okay, so it doesn't apply to us anyway. Additionally, if sudo was installed, these variables should be available to the super user execute the following commands as the root user. So, I think, yeah, we can ignore that. Yeah, we've got a separate section for installing in opt. So, method of building multiple versions installs KDE frameworks into the opt hierarchy. So, let's start with putting this export command into the environment. 
so we should be able to see that straight away there it is if you're not installing KD frameworks into user you'll need to make some additional configuration changes best practice is to add these those to your system or personal profile so this is adding these changes into the system profile and you can see it's creating the K5 prefix there every time the system's booted that, that environment variable will always exists and then all these paths are being uh, created or appended to the existing path using this prefix and the same for Qt5 so really this is the same as what's up here there's additional paths because opt is not under the normal user directory um, the only difference is as I say the additional paths and the fact that the path is different so let's copy all of this oh sorry as the root user and again because it's not under the standard user hierarchy we need to add the locate the different location of the frameworks into the LDSO conf so the uh, shared libraries can be uh, located for frameworks several KD frameworks packages install files into dbus directories when installing KD frameworks 5 in a location other than user dbus needs to be able to find these files the easiest way to achieve this the easiest way to achieve this is to create the following sim links as the root user so before we do that I'll just do the uh, LD config as we've altered the cache path uh, oh sorry yeah that, that's a bit pointless actually because we haven't installed frameworks but that's just habit more than anything so let's create these links some packages may also install icons from the high color icon set since that icon set is used by many packages it's a good idea to create a sim link to the one in user share to avoid having multiple installations of high color icon theme 17 run the following commands as the root user so let's do that as well tip sometimes the installation paths are hard coded into the installed files this is the reason why opt k5 is used as installation prefix instead of opt kf5 after installing kd frameworks you may rename the directory and recreate a sim link so in theory we could do this now because the prefix will be pointing at the sim link um, yeah it says later on you want to, may want to install other versions to do that just remove the sim link and use opt kf5 as a prefix again which version of kd5 framework kd framework 5 you use depends on where the sim link points no other reconfiguration will be necessary so let's just see what we've got in the opt directory we've got a directory called kf5 and it doesn't point to anything so if we do these two commands well that command will rename that kf5 to a version directory so there it is there and this command will recreate kf5 but it will be a sim link pointing at the version directory exactly the same as we've seen with all these other packages we've installed so there's kf5 now that's what our kf5 prefix is pointing to so again we install into that sim link and it points to the version directory and that's the current version of kf5 that we'll be installing building and installing so now that's all set up we can come out oh, it again adding bookmarks come out of this just double check that we have the kf5 prefix still and it is still there so we can now proceed with the frameworks installation so we need to check these dependencies so doc book pretty sure we've got that .xml yeah 
got that. Let's just open that one up and close it. Giflib we have as well. Pretty sure we've got epoxy. So, yeah, the PNG I'm certain we've got. That's there. LMDB, let's see if we've got that one. No, we haven't got that one, so that's one we've definitely got to install. And WGET we've definitely got because we're using that all the time. Uh, recommended we've got A Spell, Avahi, Lib Dbus Mini QT we just installed. Network Manager, I think we've built that. Is it a capital N? Alright, oh, okay, maybe not. Thought we had that one. So that's interesting. We've got a network manager startup script. Oh, sorry, that's the startup script for network manager, right? I see. So, yeah, we do need to install this one. That's the BFS boot, boot script, so that's part of the uh, uh, expanded tarball. Optional and runtime dependency for framework integration. So that needs two fonts. Looks like we haven't got either of those. Um, okay, so that's pointing in the wrong place. So we need oxygen fonts in the first one. Further down. And noto fonts for the second one. So fonts. Right. Okay. Looks like there's loads of different de optional or runtime dependencies. KPI. Dot, all right. This looks like API documentation, so we can ignore that. Uh, Jasper, I think we've got. Yep. KIO. Kerberos we're not using, so we can skip that. Okay, so it looks like we've got everything we need uh, in terms of dependencies required. What we need to install. Uh, so this network manager needs something called libndp. Unlikely that we've got that. Yep, we haven't. So let's go down one and start fetching these DHCPD we're not using that so I'm going to skip those two packages IP tables yeah I don't think I'm going to bother with any of these because this is purely to get the um, dependency run I'm not, not really interested in having a full network manager installed unless of course Despite the fact it says recommended, it, it complains that it does need them. But uh, I think I'll be happy with um, just the package as it is. So let's do libndp, which is a definite requirement. Okay, that's interesting. The ndp.org okay okay so the DNS is definitely working I just can't find that host for some reason so again what we did yesterday let's copy the file name get a new tab up in fact get a new window up and 
we shall search for it. Let's put in quotes. So I'm hoping to see us somewhere. There's there's a mirror site there, so that that should be good. Okay, that's taking long. I wonder if there's some more my internet connection now. Let's try putting this Oregon State University in. See if that comes up. That looks like the link there that we want. Oh, right, the other one's just come up now. <laughs> yeah, this looks good. So we want something called lib ndp 1.7. So lib lmn tp-1.7 tar.gz so there it is there so let's copy the link yep that's good so I'll leave that browser up just in case we need that again uh, so let's do an md5 sum on that file and just double check that it's the same as what's in the book ea4 a, that's OK. AE14 at the end, so that's fine. Let's use that. Right, so it looks like it's a straightforward configure and make. And install it. Okay, that's done. It took quicker to get it and find it on the internet than it did to build and install it. Such is the way. Right, so that's finished with. We can now do Network Manager. Okay. I don't know why this has appeared. That's better. So if Qt5 is installed and the Qt base examples are desired, fix the configure script. So I'm not going to do that because, as I say, this network manager is just a. Uh, I don't think it's something I haven't used normally. It's not really needed. Um, unless it's important to you, you can obviously go ahead and install the dependencies and the examples if you so wish but I'm going to skip that so let's do this set to fix some issues and another set for fix with Python 3 so we've got lots of configuration commands here let's start by creating a build directory and then let's copy this command and just double check the settings that we've got. So CXX flags, oh yes, that's right at the beginning. So it just says they're necessary to build a Qt5 based example. So we're not building them, but it shouldn't be a problem having them there. Uh, we've got next the docs equals true, use, use the switch to enable building man pages and documentation if you've got GTK doc installed so I can't actually see that anywhere but I say man page is always a good thing and documentation as well we'll have that NMTUI equals true, the parameter enables building NMTUI so I don't know what that is but it's in the um, Configure, configure command they've supplied, so we'll leave that as it is. Session tracking equals no and system D. All oh right, okay, this is system D type thing, so um, yeah, I think that's what these two are here, so that's okay. JSON validation equals false, 
these three. These switches disable building with the respective libraries. Remove them if you have the needed libraries installed. So we'd have to cross reference these with what we've got up here. Um, I can't see anything JSON related there actually. Chasing validation equals false. Right, well, we have built some Jason stuff, so I'll tend to think that we can remove that. There's nothing that's recommended or optional it says Jason so I'm going to have to crash this out and modify it so uh, let's do it from here and obviously if it fails it does indicate we do need that switch so let's copy that part the next one, libpsl. Well, I'm sure we've got libpsl installed. And what was the other one? Dovs. I'm not sure what that is. So let's try without those commands disabling. those packages and we can see what happens right, let's see what the other switches are first disables PPP right yep never use that so we'll have that give audit no and SC Linux they're not part of LF, uh, BLFS, so we'll have. So what was it again? Lib audit and SE Linux. Linux. Lib audit. All right, we've already copied the lib audit, so that's okay. And Qt equals false disables Qt examples, so we definitely need that. So it looks like we can copy the rest of this and we'll see whether this is going to crash or not with those disable commands that I've taken off. There was uh, some red there. Oh, right, it's Jensen, it says. Oh, so that must be something to do with JSON. So let's recall that command and add in the JSON validation equals false switch oh right I perhaps should have read the rest of the message oh no it's a different message now so that one's saying Jansen is needed for team configuration and then I've added that, that Jason switch in and it's now saying Jansen is needed for open V switch integration so that must be the OVS one so it does look like the defaults that be the BLFS team have given are probably what we need. So let's just find that one. Is that one there? And I'm probably expecting the last one to fail. Yep, libnoot. We didn't install libnoot, so that's that NMTUI one. Oh, I see this isn't one we left in, so let's set that to false. Uh, can't you see it there? Did we not copy that one in? PSL. Maybe we didn't copy this one in, maybe I missed that one.
prefix is confirmed. Is that the level did no even name true? Oh, there it is there. So we'll have to set that to false because we didn't install libnote. It was a recommended library at the top. Right, so that seems to have passed OK. So Lipit, it looks like it accepted the fact that we missed out the libpsl um, the, uh, equals false command. So it obviously has found libpsl. I wonder if we can actually see it. Yeah, there it is. So that's okay. So now we can type ninja to build it. Right, that has failed. Um, it's likely it's going to be one of the uh, recommended libraries that's missing. Not immediately ob obvious what. Oh, right, the DHCP, it may be something to do with that because I did notice when this started that although we haven't got any DHCP libraries in, it looks like it's trying to build stuff for DHCP. So it says true for these DHCP programs, so it could well be that. So, what we need to do is find out. Um, I've not really used Meson before, let's see if we can get a help up for it to find out how to disable these two. Uh, let's put that through less. Come on, so it looks like there's a Meson. And help of a sub command. Let's try doing something like um, configure minus D. Let's just guess at the moment, a quick guess. DHCP equals false. Let's see what that does to the configure command. Alright, okay, what's it say now? Uh, so I can see that the directory is already configured to just run your build. Do ninja. If ninja fails, run ninja reconfigure or meson reconfigure to force meson to regenerate. If build failures persist, run meson setup wipe to rebuild from scratch using the same options as past when configuring the build. 
to change option values, run meson configure instead. So let's try that. See what that does. Okay, it looks like it's showing us what all the options are. So let's pipe that through DHCP and see what comes up. So it looks like it's DHCP DHCP CD I need to disable. Is this an FOS Claude it is, that's nice. Right, there's three DHCP options there and we need to disable all of them. So let me um Way to do this. Let's get the configure command up and add each of these. So that's DH client was the first one. Capital D DH client we've done DHCP Canon DHCP Canon equals false and minus D DHCP Canon. Let's just double check we spell that properly. Yeah, DHCP Canon and DHCP CD. DHCP CD equals false. So I'll just put that in. Let it let it fail. So what I'm going to do now is go back and just. Uh, oh, let's try this setup wipe. Like I said, I'm not sure what I'm doing here. I've never done this before. But just going by the hints that have been given. We can see if we can. Uh, all right, that's just using the. Yeah, that's just reusing the configure command. So let's actually just start from scratch again. As I say, that's why it's a good idea to install the recommended. They generally make life a lot easier by doing that. But I specifically do not want. DHCPD, I never use it, I always use static um, IP addresses. It's what the system is that we're using has uh, got as well at the moment. There's no need, no need for DHCPD. Arguably, I could just install the package and not use it, but um, I, I just don't want it on the system. So, this is maybe a good example of how you can tweak the. Um, Beyond Linux from scratch, uh, installation instructions to suit your own means. Uh, you know to have it exactly, have the system exactly how you want it. So we've got to go back and do these set commands because we've just recreated the um, build directory, just expanded everything. So let's put that in and that one. We create the build directory and we should be able to recall our config command that's got these extra switches in to disable anything to do with, to do with DHCP. So let's now see if that works. Okay, so these three are now set to false, so hopefully when we run Ninja this time it won't fail and it was approximately job 470 I think it was or 407 so let's see what happens now
Right, so it's into the 400s. I did see some D8. Oh no, it's failed again. Unfortunately. Um. Maybe the case I'm going to have to bite the bullet and install um, the, the recommended packages, unfortunately. Rather than uh, spend time trying to work this out. some Wi-Fi stuff there which we wouldn't need either because we haven't got that installed um, functions so it hasn't found lib e logging d hasn't found jensen so it's looking for these programs in various locations So the curl. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's um there's any problems with what it's locating, it's probably to do with what it's trying to build. So it's a Python Looks like it's a Python script that's failing. Generate settings setting docs. So I'm going to try setting the documents to false actually because it looks like it may be something to do with it and it's generating documentation. Oh, 
I thought we had, had added the... Uh, Oh, I know it's because we uh, put the new command in. So let me turn it off. Maybe it's doing this. By default. So is there any other things we can do without having to re uh, rebuild, uh, re-expand the package, the tarball? I wonder if this means on configure we can do configure and actually put that in. I wonder if that will reconfigure it with an option. So look at the docs one. So it's set to false. Let's try it with these two Wi-Fi related ones. So WEXT and Wi-Fi equal false. We run the configure command. Yeah, they're both set to false now, so that's the way to reconfigure it then, obviously. Just worth checking. There's quite a few to check, though. Let's try it, Ninja, one more time, and see what it does. Right, that total number of jobs has gone down quite a lot. It was 700 and something, so that may be the wireless part. It could also be the um, documentation. Of course, we do run the risk of creating something that we can install but it's not good enough for uh, a dependency for the framework, so that's a bit of a risk. Um, oh, it looks like maybe it's just a wrapper, so we might be able to get away with this. No, this is failing. Okay, I'm just going to ignore this. As I said, I don't really know what I'm doing here. Uh, so let's go for the actual recommended dependencies. Unfortunately, a bit more work. Uh, IP tables. New PYC objects. I'm sure we've got that. Objects. Right, it's a different version to the one we've got. It's 3.3a.4 and we've got 2.287. So we'll need that. Uh, WPA supplicant. Okay. So this needs libnl. So I think we can grab this and some documentation. So, the only extra switch we've got is to disable the installation of CLI tools, which you probably want. So, I'll just take that configure and make command as it is.
okay, we can install this now. Right, looks like the documentation we downloaded was API documentation. So we'll skip that bit. So WPA supplicant. So kernel configuration. Um, so I haven't got wireless on this virtual machine, so I'm not going to do that. But if if you were to use wireless and you were enabling it and so on. Um, then obviously you need to do these changes to the kernel and recompile it and reinstall it. So let's create a configuration file. And it says if you wish to use WPA supplicant network manager, which is yes, because that's the reason why we're building WPA supplicant in this case. Make sure you have installed Dbus, which we've got, and LibXML2 we've got. Then add the following options to the WPA supplicant. Build configuration, configuration file by running the following command. So just some more configurations. Install WPA supplicant by running the following commands. Okay, the next bit is to an option to install a GUI program if we've got Qt5 installed. So we have, so let's build this additional program. And it says not to be concerned about the fact that the directory, the subdirectory is called Qt4. Right, so now we can install it. There's the root. If you have built WPA supplicant with Dbus support, you will need to install Dbus configuration files. So yes, we have. And if you've built the WPA supplicant GUI program, install it by running the following commands as root. You'll need to restart the system dbus daemon before you can use the WP supplicant dbus interface. Well, unlikely that we'll need to use it, but let's restart it anyway. So it's forward slash etc init.d forward slash dbus and then the word restart afterwards. Oh, I forgot that might happen actually because we're in. Uh, a graphical environment it uses the dbus and we've just restarted that daemon so that's why it's throwing us out okay let's log out and make sure log in again we don't get the error again right i'm going to restart the machine that's not a good thing to do Yeah, I've obviously broken something there. It's obviously affected other other programs that rely on Dbus. So if you are lucky enough not to install that, uh, sorry, not to restart Dbus before I actually did, don't do it and just wait till uh, you have a chance to reboot your machine. Right, okay, we got rid of that error message now. So let's load up CMonkey again and 
Next terminal. So we're down to here. This package installs desktop files in the user share applications. So again, we need to run this because we've got the desktop file utils installed. So I'll just run that. So in theory, we should have a GUI. Hopefully, it's here under internet, is it? Yeah, WPA GUI. So. Yeah, it's, it's disabled because we we haven't got any um, wireless interfaces or indeed any hardware built into, built into the kernel. So let's get rid of that. Uh, configuration, we probably don't need to do this again. We haven't got a wireless, so I shall skip all of this. Uh, so I think that's done. This is a module by the looks of it, so PYG object 3304 PYG object. Oh there it is there. It's this linking that's a bit off skew. So it looks like we've got all the options. So we can just fetch it. Sorry, not the options, the dependencies, I mean. Oh, I'm just wondering if this, why that Python script was failing. It could well be this. This module that's missing. So we'll do as we've done before, build it for Python 2 and Python 3, as we've got both of them. Okay, so we'll install these now. That's the Python 2 install and the Python 3. And that's done. Now I'm just wondering I think I might take another go at this network manager and see if that is what was causing the failure, in which case that should really be a requirement rather than a recommended uh, package. But let's see, just be a few more minutes added on to do this. So Got one said and another said and make the build directory and change into it then we've got to find our command so I'm going to turn this back to true and leave the rest as it is Let's try building. Oh, 
well, that number of jobs gone up to 848. So I wonder if this extra module has made a difference, or indeed it could be the wireless, come to think of it, which I haven't turned off this time. Well, it seems to have got past that point, assuming um, the 418 or whatever it was it was failing at before was the same job. It's hard to tell because there's more jobs to do this time, but it's looking better. We did get this error before, or this warning, so the fact it's gone way beyond that is a good indication that Python module was the thing that was missing. So. Again, it's, I think it's the second time I've seen that where what has been referred to as a recommended package in the book is probably should be a requirement uh, rather than a recommendation. Looks like some of these messages are just, well, these are obviously warnings, but some are just information by the looks of it. Yeah, there's a couple of warnings there, but at least the build is not failing, so that's good. Okay, it looks like it's finished, so although there's got, it's got errors saying there's no ID for constraint, link end and so on, you can see the number of jobs is is complete. So that to me looks like a successful build. So let's attempt to install it. Right, so that's installed successfully, so that's good. Um, 
and nothing, it's just one final command. It's up to move some documentation or rename the directory to a version directory, that's what that's doing. So configuration. At least the minimal configuration file must be present, not installed with make install, so we need to create the configuration file. To allow Polkit to manage authorizations. Oh, sorry, let me just want to say here. This file should not be modified directly by the user's system. Okay. To allow Polkit to manage authorizations, add the following configuration file. Just copy and paste that in. To use something other than the built in DHCP client, recommended only if using NMCLI. Use the following configuration. Valid values of DH client, DHCP, and internal. Well, I'll copy this in case it's another case of it needs this file here, but obviously it's not going to find that program if it attempts to use DHCP. To prevent network manager from updating the etc. resolve file, add the following configuration. So this is quite important. You don't want the um, etc. resolve file. It's likely to change it in such a way that you won't um, have your DNS names resolved at all. To allow regular users permission to configure network connections, you should add the following to the NetDev group. Add them to the NetDev group and create a pocket rule that grants access. Run the following commands as a root user. So this bit is going to add the group NetDev and modify a user, which in our case would be BLFS, to have access to NetDev. And then these are the pocket rules. And then we've got a boot script to ensure Network Manager runs at boot up. So we go back down or back up to the BLFS directory and then down into the. All oh right, we're in the build directory, are we? Yep, sorry, it's up to. And then down into the BLF boot scripts directory. And we can copy that command in. And we can also start it as well. What's it called? Network Manager. Okay, that's fine. So if we come out, let's just check the groups we're in. You see, we're not in the um, which one was it? NetDev. So before we re, uh, re log in, let's delete this directory. Okay. And now let's go back in as BLFS. So look at our groups. Oops, the NES. And there we go, we've got NetDev, we're part of the NetDev group. So we'll be able to modify things. So I think now I will be able to get rid of these other packages that I didn't want to install, get rid of Network Manager. Uh, what was this one for LMDB? See why that one was needed now. Boost extra. Oh, right, okay, it's a KFI dependency. Yes, that's right, so these three we've still got to install. So let's fetch LMDB. some oh nothing in particular so we can start that building uh, right. and now we are able to make install. Again. 
Sorry, I'm uh, being distracted here. I'm going to have to uh, pause this a minute. So I'll just... Um, save this machine state. And I'll have to pause the video and then come back and recall the machine state. Okay, so apologies for that. That's been sorted now. Um, so let's see what we're doing here. Okay, so just installed LMDB. Okay. Oh, have I just. Yeah, I've been downloading this in my home directory. Uh, like I said, I was distracted. Yeah, so let's remove an MDB. Move the tarball into sources BLFS, and then we can go back to BLFS. Okay. Right, so we've got two sets of fonts to install. Um, Oxygen and Noto. So we need to fetch them from an external site. So this is an exception to the rule. We've got download all fonts. Yeah, I'm not sure. You can obviously download them individually. Oh, there are loads of different languages here. Um, I think I'm just going to download the whole lot rather than pick and choose. You may want to pick and choose to save space. I can't remember offhand if you can specify which fonts you want installed even though you downloaded all of them, but um, I'm just going to go for this big download. And while that's running, I'll just read this. Uh, so it explains why they're called no to no tofu i.e. avoiding boxes with dots, hex digits when a glyph cannot be found. There's a set of fonts which aim to cover every glyph in Unicode no matter how obscure. These fonts are at least the sans serif fonts used by KFR writes the sans serif fonts. If you want to cover the historic languages you can download all the fonts by clicking on the link at the top of the page. So maybe it was just the sans serif. Um, maybe that's just the one to download. Well, there are several, so there's that one. There's that one there as well. I think I'll just stick with the download. It's only going to be another few minutes. Uh, it says you should be aware that font config knows nothing about Noto fonts. The Noto Sans something fonts are each treated as separate fonts, and for Arabic there is not specifically a Sans name. So if you have other fonts installed, then the choice of which fonts to use for missing glyphs where Noto Sans is specified will be random, except that Sans fonts will be preferred over known serif and monospace fonts because Sans is the fallback for all unknown fonts. And then there are the Oxygen fonts, which is what was in this tab. Let's get rid of that one. When KD5, KD Framework 5 was released, it used the Oxygen fonts, which were designed for integrated use with the KDE desktop. These fonts are no longer actively maintained, so KDE made a decision to switch to Noto fonts, but for the moment they are still required by Start KDE. Originally, these fonts were only supplied as source, needing CMake and Font, font Forge. To create the TTF files, but for a while the source has been included, has also included the prepared TTF. The only unusual feature is that each TTF file is in its own subdirectory. With the source in further subdirectories, you could just install the install the whole source table if you prefer. All that 
although that will waste space. So let's. Oh right, okay, that's a that's a link to a file. So let's get rid of that and let's download that in another tab. Copy link location. So this may slow down the other. I oh know it's got nice and tiny. So let's install these oxygen ones while the other one's installing using the uh, Deja View installation as instructions as an example. So uh, I'm going to make a temporary directory in case these don't uh, extract it into their own directory and change into it. So let's extract the oxygen fonts. Right, okay, it did create its own directory. So the oxygen fonts are in a subdirectory called oxygen fonts. Let's have a look at them. Okay, there's further subdirectories. Right, so there's the font there. Um, let's locate them all. So there's three TTFs and there's no OTF. So basically what we need to do is to do this install command to create a directory with the correct permissions. But we'll call it oxygen. We'll do this as the super user. Then we need to oh, become super user again. So we need to do install uh, that font into directory we've just created and then the next one which is regular 400 so there it is oxygen sons ttf so we install that one and finally we do the last one which is in a directory called bold 700 so just double check that we've done oxygen mono regular ttf that top one we've done oxygen sons and now we're doing oxygen sons bold uh, sorry So let's double check that we've got those three fonts in the, the font subdirectory, which we have. So now all we need to do is to update. Isn't that copy? It's update the cache on this directory. So existing cache has valid three fonts and it succeeded. So that's that's the oxygen fonts installed. So let's go back here. It looks like that's finished downloading. So we'll do the same thing. I'll um, change the temp directory first and extract these fonts. Oh, this is a zip file. Right, okay. Uh, let's remove that one first. Unzip. No tote. Yeah, so you can see this is why I created a separate directory because each of these files, it looks like 
they're not being installed or extracted into a subdirectory they're just being extracted where we are so that would have meant we'd had all these font files in, intermixed with all the tar files in the BLFS directory and that would have been quite horrendous so let's have a look at let's have a look how many OTFs we've got some OTFs in there and there's definitely some TTFs in there yeah so let's do as we did before as I say if you know you don't want for example you know Tamil fonts or uh, Myanmar fonts and so on then maybe the op option is rather than downloading this huge file just pick out ones you think you need but uh, for now I'll just do as we've done before just install the whole lot so these are no toe fonts oh again we need to be let's become sudo permanently FS and rerun that command. Okay, and then we're going to install all of the TTFs into that Noto directory, and we'll do the same for all the OTFs as well. And then finally, we'll update the font cache with the Noto. So 1605 fonts we've just installed there. <laughs> That's way over the top. So we can get rid of that page and that page. So now we should be in a position to uh, download and install K5. Yeah, the, the system just become a little bit unresponsive and I noticed there was something still processing in the background so it's probably the um, cache still right into the disk for example updating that looks like it's okay now oh it's still pausing a little bit it's not swallowed up memory so that's okay so it looks like this is done with um, scripting to automate the build because there's loads of little packages it says the easiest way to get the KDE framework packages is to use a single wget to fetch them all at once so let's come out of here, remove this temp directory and return to the KDE directory and we'll use this URL command and wget command to fetch all the packages Okay, so that's downloaded. So now we've got a file to create with the file names and MD5 checksums. And it says, uh, I think this happened before, there's some um, of these 
programs that are hashed out. Um, for example, the extra CMake module's entry has been commented out because it was built earlier. The icon packages cover separately with Breeze icons and Oxygen icons. Modem manager QT package may be built if its optional dependency has been built. That has been installed, sorry, so let's just double check that modem manager, I think we... Um, well, yeah, it's highlighted, so it looks like we have got that one. So maybe we can... Maybe it's not there. Or is it capital M? Yeah, it's there, so we can uncomment that one. So I'll send this file, frameworks. So there's the extra CMake that's commented out, which we've all installed. KD WebKit, I think that's quite a large build that is. Um, KD WebKit may be built if the external package QT WebKit has been built. So it's external, we haven't built it, so we won't be building the KD WebKit. Modem Manager, let's uncomment that one. And Breeze icon, I don't remember doing Breeze icons actually. And the Prism Package is a barcode reader. May be built if the required external libraries have been, been installed. So we'll leave that one unchecked. Oh, sorry, commented out. So let's just check. Breeze. Yeah, I don't think we've done Breeze. Uh, let's not do it from the root. Let's do it from... Right. All oh, right. Okay. It's part of the KDE, so we've already done them. Yeah. So that's fine. And I know we've done the oxygen ones. Oxygen fonts. So that 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 all ties up. So it's just the uh, modem manager QT that we've enabled from the default. That's the only difference we've, we've done. So once again, with this automated building they've got a script here to allow the sudo to be used for installation so just put that function back into the current running shell if installing in opt and there is an existing opt k5 right we don't need to do this because there isn't an existing opt k5 this is a brand new installation so let's start bash minus e to force an exit on error and then we compile each package in turn with this script which will exit this shell at the end as well
Right, so that's installed all those modules. Um, okay, so it's saying about the um, if the installation is not in user uh, to rename directory and create a symlink. So, I mean, that should already be did, done. We did that at the beginning, so let's just check opt. Sorry. Okay, five. So link points at the version directory. When we look through the link, we can see stuff that's been installed there. So that's that's fine. So that's the framework. So within the frameworks, we've got applications that can be installed. So these frameworks are nothing, although there's binaries there, they're not really apps that can be run uh, standalone. Um, they're probably more like services and um, daemon type programs to allow the apps to um, run within the KDE environment. So we'll go through all of these and install them one by one. And under further KDE packages, it, it gives an example um, of how to install the remainder there. there are, I think there's several hundred, as I remember. Um, and what I'll do is just pick out one and um, you know, basically see if we can install it. It should be no problem, but we'll see how we go. So let's install the first one, which is ARC, which is like an archiving utility. So it needs, or it has a dependency of libarchive. Let's see if we've got that. We have, so we can just go straight away and fetch arc. So I think you'll find that most of these commands are fairly similar. They may alter slightly for each each of these. Um, applications. So it's built, we can install that now. And that's arc complete. So KD and live or in live. Um, this needs a couple of utilities, a couple of patch uh, packages. So MLT, I don't think we've got. Um, and I don't think we've got the V4L stuff either. No. So video for Linux, we've got all its requirements. Um, let's drop down, we'll drop back up to BLFS and fetch this. Uh, 
and install this one, or let's rather build this one while that's building. Let's see if we can locate arc. Yeah, it looks like either something's happened or we need to do something different to update these menus. I'm not sure. Can't find arc there at all. So let's try the application finder. There it is right at the top. And there you go. You can open archives. In fact, we should be able to open any one of the um, source um, packages. So I don't know why it's not listing any there. Should be loads of them. App image application one. All oh, right, it's, it needs to know specific types. So if we do, for example, XZs, uh, we can look at uh, I don't know FFmpeg. So you can see that's loading, and there's the contents of the FFmpeg table. So that's that one. Right, so that's built, let's install it. Okay, that's failed for some reason. Alright, looks like it may be a problem with these .la files, possibly. Um, so let's run the remove script. Let's remove those LA files and patch package config files as well, but it looks of it. And I don't know if this will work again. No, we might have to rebuild this. Let's try installing again. That's much better. So that's that one. Uh, let's do MLT now. That's got a requirement for free, free all plugins and some optional. Um, Packages there which I want to install. This needs something called Gavel. 
okay I've always got a dependency on the PNG which we've got so we can now fetch this one okay so looking at the command explanations this just helps the linker uh, find a math library and we've got a switch without doxygen because we've not installed that anyway so we can just copy and paste Okay, and we'll install that. That's done. So now we can install this frail plugins. So there's an action actually an option there to disable the use of gavel so we won't install that or we'll add that because we've just installed gavel and now we can install um, and now we've got the dependencies required for MLT <coughs> so let's fetch that one So there's a few um, options in the configure here. There's no explanation for them. I guess the GPO and GPO3 uh, licensing to enable certain licensing. Uh, maybe that enables or disables certain features. Enable OpenGL because we've got Mesa installed. We'd use that. Disable GTK2. Maybe that enables GTK3. and a couple of switches to point to where our QT5 there is so let's just double check that those or that um, environment variable is set and indeed it is and it's set to the correct location so we can just copy all of this
Okay, that's done. It just says about um, if you um, this package uses advanced graphical abilities, so you made any specific firmware for your graphics card. So that would be probably more appropriate if you're building some real hardware and certainly not in this um, emulated environment. So let's install that package now. And that's done. So now we can install KDE Live. Let's switch back to the KDE directory. And copy the URL. Cut the set commands to fix issues with GCC7. I imagine that's GC7, GCC7 or newer. And then we've got some commands to configure and build. No extra commands that the BLFS team have identified for us. So if you did want to see if there was any other options, you'd have to investigate it yourself. Um, Bear in mind that these options are probably the safest and most conservative.
let's try it's interesting well, let's look at this one it's got a funny name dotty so can we actually paste in a I'm not sure how to um, paste in the URL here. So let's go to user share. Uh, it was graphics, wasn't it? Doc PDF. Okay. All supported files, and it's not missing any. A bit strange. <laughs> uh, let's have a look at that dotty. Could not open file. Could not find a plugin which is able to handle the document being passed. Oh, that's a bit strange. Um, Alright, maybe we need one of these optional ones. These being optional, as in what documents do you want to? view so I imagine it's going to be this QCA one possibly I'm not sure um, yeah I'd imagine it'd be that one I'm not going to install it this is just purely to show the um, KDE apps being built more than anything else um, but you can see the windows there. The support would have to be built in for the type of documents you'd want to uh, be able to display with this app. So let's move on until we delete that one. Yeah, looks like it. So libkdc raw. So I think this is a viewing. Um, raw images from cameras so let's have a look at we've got Jasper yeah so I need this raw library first of all so let's move out of KDE get that and there's capital L So there's a few switches here just being explained in April JPEG. We've got Lib Turbo so we can Lib JPEG Turbo so we can have that. Enable Jasper we've got that, we've got LCMS as well, so we don't need to remove any of those switches as it suggests we might need to. So I'll just copy and paste that in. Right, and then we can do uh, make install. And that's that. Now we can install the KDC raw. So go back to the KDE directory. And fetch the file. And we can install that. So this looks like it's a library, so there's no programs. I imagine it's been installed to 
provide extra functionality to the Gwen view, which is a uh, quite a good image viewer. So we've got the requirements. Let's download the package and a patch for it. So let's patch the source directory and just again copy and paste the commands. Okay, so we can now install, and that's Gwen View built. So, so it's a quite a nice image viewer. Um, not sure where we'll be able to find any images. Uh, let's take a look. PI is as low as here, isn't there? So you share icons, new Ove X2. Use that, share, icons, uh, let's look at the high resolution ones, actions, create uh, a document, that's strange, PNG image, look at that one, there's that image there, um, you can go to browse and you can see all the images that are in there that which are obviously icons and click on any of them to view it full size. So that's that one. So next we've got libkcddb which is oh we need a dependency here. Lib Music Brains, we've got its dependencies. So let's go down out of KDE, fetch Lib Music Brains. And we 
can build this with the default um, commands that are given. And we're not building any API documentation, so we'll just install it. Okay, so now we can load this CDDB. And again, just copy and paste. Okay, so now we can install it and move on to K3B, which is a CD strict DVD burner. Um, lip sample rate we need is a dependency. Um, and there's three programs it says it needs for runtime CDR tools and DVD plus R, uh, DVD plus tools. So let's get those installed. So oh we put this libkcddb in the wrong place, so let's move that. Libkcddb should be in KDE. And let's get the CDR tools package done. So we've got some set commands and then the make command. And then we can install it. CDR tools. Oh, I actually did that. DVD tools. All oh, right, I needed to see. I saw that was coloured, and I thought oh, I would already installed it, but it's something we've got to install. But it only needs it at runtime, so that's not a problem that we've built it without CDR tools. So we'll we'll do that next. So export a variable and build it and it looks like it'll yeah at least does not support parallel build. Hence the um J one.
place that's built, let's become the user and install it. Super user. So that's installed. Now then we can install lib sample right. Um, two optional files weren't installed, it says for tests. So let's just grab this. We can saw it now. And it's done. So now we can build K3B. So let's move back to the KDE directory and fetch it.
Okay, so that is built. So let's install it. Okay, that's it. So So say like K3B is a burner type program, so we should find it maybe under here. Yep. K3B. And it's actually warning us that there's no uh, writer as did the um, uh, other burner we had. I can't remember what it's called now. We, we installed another one that um, failed because of the fact that it's just a, a read-only ROM that's being emulated in this environment. So anyway, that looks like that works. It's it's reading the, the virtual CD-ROM that's the actual uh, VBox editions, guest editions disk. So that's that's quite promising that it can view that. So um, move on to the further KDE packages. It's got a link here that. Um, has the list of all the applications that are available within KDE 5 suite that can be installed and it suggests a few here that you might want to look at um, and it gives a suggested installation um, commands which look pretty much similar if not identical to the ones we've been using for the apps we've installed so far um, as a little touch just for going off the BLFS manual slightly, um, as it does point us to these apps, I'll install a little game, just a game that Windows users may recognise called K-Mines, which is like a Minesweeper crone. So it looks like that's the link there. Okay, I didn't copy again. Yeah. So if we extract this, <coughs> I'm assuming it doesn't need any um, dependencies. Um, the note here that says some packages will require additional de dependencies to determine what dependencies are needed. Run from the top of the source tree this command. So. Let's run that to check to see what it does need. Errors occurred. So it's found, 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 found. See, make error by not providing K uh, find KF five KD games or see making see make module path. This product has been as I'll see make to find a package configuration file provided by KF5 KDE games but CMake did not find one. So this looks like there's a dependency called KF5 KDE5 possibly. Let's go to the top. Right, let's search for something called games then. With KDE games, so that could be it there. <clears throat> so let's download that and see if that's all it takes. So let's recall that command, see what that comes up with. <coughs> Okay, this looks like it's, yeah, I won't bother with this then, I, I thought it might just work um, with one hit, so I'll remove these two, that 
probably wasn't a good idea for a demo, especially as I'd never tried it before. So the KDE games and K Mines. I thought maybe K Mines might be quite a simple game to install. And indeed it could be the reason why they've chosen those certain packages. Maybe they don't have too many dependencies on other other packages within the KDE suite. So anyway, we'll go on to the last part, which I think it'll be an automated build again. Yes, it is. It's, it's the final part. It's like the desktop environment, so it's the equivalent of what you can see on the screen, the rendering and the appearance. Um, so this is KDE's own desktop environment. So let's get up all the ones that haven't been highlighted, because they're obviously ones that possibly aren't installed but it looks like some of them are and we'll just go through them and knock off the ones that we have got so PCI utils let's go back LSPCI utils I'm sure we've got yep so get rid of that one <coughs> oxygen icons I think that was part of the KDE wasn't it yep so we've got that LM sensors so I don't think we've got that. No, get rid of that one. Uh, sorry, we'll keep that one. Uh, Linux PAM we definitely have got. Uh, XOR drivers. What XOR drivers is they? Yeah, now I don't know because... Oh, right, it'll be lib input. So... Yeah, there it is there. Let's find lib. I think we did put this one in. But let's check. No, we haven't. Okay, so we definitely need that one. FFTW, I don't recall that one. No. XCB util cursor, I think that's part of the XORG. Util cursor, that's there. SASSC, I'm sure we haven't got that one. No. Pulse audio, we have, I'm sure. Yep. Lib XKB common. Yeah, that's there. GCOM, I'm sure we had that one. Is it capital, capital GC even, yeah. Okay, so we've got four at least we need. So LM sensors. Needs which, which we've got. So let's fetch this. And then underscore senses. <clears throat> so, right, this needs some kernel modifications. Um, Yeah, this is uh, quite a good suggestion what it does here. Um, basically, LM sensors activates um, sensors that may be installed on the motherboard, for example, temperature sensors. Um, well, I can't think of any others now, but uh, there's, there's various sensors. It could be temperature sensors for the CPU, for the memory, for the chipset. Um, yeah, I can't think of any others at the moment, but it will monitor these and it can create events depending on what those sensors, uh, the data that the sensors produce. Um, now because we're in the virtual environment it's probably not worth going through these settings um, to do because I, I doubt if there are any actual sensors that are being emulated but what we'll do is just go through um, the kernel, but I won't build it or anything on or save the changes. 
Um, so let's become the root, go to sources and Linux, make menu config. Right, okay, this is still not 80 columns for some reason. 7980, there you go. All oh, right, and now we've got this um, uh, terminal problem. So I think before we used, um, we set term to equal putty, as I remember, which was when we found the work. There may be others that work. Um, by all means, you can try to find others or use others if you're aware of them. But I'll use putty for now. <coughs> so that looks nicer. So first of all, we need to enable loadable module support. So that's down there. So that's checked. Then we need to go into bus options, which is up here. And make sure PCI support is enabled, which it is. Then we go into device drivers off of the main menu. Which is down there and look for I2C support which is just at the bottom of the screen and for I2C device interface we have to select M or built-in so I'm going to select M for module and then we go into this menu here I2C hardware bus support and it says to make sure they're all selected as mod modules and the reason for that is that um, the modules that are required for your sensors for your particular hardware will be the ones that will be activated and it will enable LM sensors to, to detect the module correctly so basically you just go down pressing M and down arrow for all of these that's what the um, manual is telling us to do that one's got to be checked and that one's got to be checked as built in So that's that. Then we come out of that one and we're going to the menu above and we look for hardware monitoring support. So there it is. It's already built in so we can't select that particular one as a module but we can go in here and it says again configure them all as modules. So hardware monitoring chip debugging messages, ignore that and just set all the rest to M's. So M down arrow, M down arrow is all I'm doing here at the moment. This is quite a few. And you can see by the descriptions what some of these sensors are capable of doing. So there's one there that can be built in, but it's dangerous, so I won't, won't check that. And that's basically it. So you'd have to come out of this, say yes to save the changes. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to quit. Then you'd have to make the kernel again with make, or make minus J4, for example, for parallel build. Then you'd have to make modules underscore install, and then copy the... Uh, the kernel file which is in arch x86 underscore 64 boot and there's not one there because I haven't built it uh, into the boot directory and then copy the system map into the boot directory and also the config into the boot directory and that, that will be the end of the kernel build just as we've done a couple of times before. So let's build LM sensors with this one make command. And now we can install it. And then what you do to run this is as root, you type in 
um, sensors detect does it actually tell us how to do this here yeah it does so that's the command you need to run and it basically asks you some questions which you just answer defaults are yes in this case it says it didn't detect any sensors it would ask quite a few more questions depending on what, what it finds and then it would list uh, the sensors it had found and they would be the ones that you need to keep in the kernel so you can basically turn all the other modules off but just keep the ones that uh, sensors detect finds as it says here the appropriate model should have been displayed uh, loaded and the summary is displayed at the end so now you need to recompile the kernel to enable just those options so that's that So next we've got lib input. So let's fetch this. It's got requirement of lib ev dev and mt dev. Let's see if we've got these first. Right, we've got lib f star. Right, lib ev dev we've got and we want MT dev. Yeah, we've got that as well, so we don't need to um, download those. So this is an XORG driver, so I'm going to go into XC to get this one and build it. Okay, so oh, again, this has got a kernel setting, so um, we need to set this actually now. So I need to get the kernel back up again. I don't know why this window keeps shrinking every time I close down the tab. So let's become the root again. Uh, So make menu config. Right, I don't know why that shrunk. It seems to shrink the window, maybe left and right every time I've closed the tab down and we've got to change this terminal. So that may be something you might want to make permanent change the uh, terminal variable. So we need to go to, down to device drivers, input devices, which is somewhere down here, input device support, there it is, and miscellaneous devices, and user level driver. So it's already actually selected and built in, so we don't need to make any changes luckily. So I'm just going to keep that tab open now in case we need it again. And we can build, let's see if there's any command explanations there is. So let's copy that much there. So that tells it where the hardware database files are installed. Debug GUI equals false. So there's a visual debug helper for lib input. Don't need that. Test equals false. Don't want any tests. And documentation, documentation is false because we haven't got doc, Doxygen installed. And remove this if you have an external lib Wacom, diary, uh, lib Wacom installed. So we'll just accept the defaults again. Just set the two dots on the end to show the parent directory. And that's done, so just run Ninja. And that's built, so let's run sudo e ninja install. And 
and that's finished. So we've done installing documentation and that's a little bit of input done. So FFTW, so we've done this one, you know. Maybe I'm thinking of FFmpeg. So we build FFTW three times for different libraries in different numerical precisions. The default double precision floating point, the older 32-bit single precision version named float which sacrifices precision for speed and the long double which offers increased precision at a lower cost of a slower execution. So this has got no dependencies, let's fetch it. And the first is for double precision arithmetic. Let's take a quick look at any explanations. Got enable threads that's been put in the commands. Enable float. So these are the different options to enable the different uh, resolutions of the accuracy. So I think we just copy and make these. Uh, copy and paste these, sorry, as, as they are to get the three different builds. Right, so that's built, we can install it. And now we build the single precision version. Just tack on the make install to the end.
Right, so that one's done. We can install again. Oh, sorry, it was installed, wasn't it, as part of that? I forgot. So we can now go on to do the long double precision build. And again, I'll make install at the end of this. So that's uh, installed that package, tidy up. Now we build SASSC. So this looks like it's two packages to download here. So the first one we installed is the library, which is the second download. It's kind of confusing that it's not the wrong way around. <clears throat> Okay, so we can install that now. Now we've got the instructions to build the actual program itself, including the tar command to extract the package. Okay, 
that's nice and simple so let's install it and it's done So we should be in a position to go with building Plasma 5 now. And as I said before, it's a um, automated build. So let's go back into KDE. In fact, um, thinking about this, you could split this into two or three directories if you wanted to keep the parts separate. So there's the KF5, the Frameworks 5, you could keep them, for example, a KF5 directory. Then there's the apps that you download, so they could be in a KDE apps directory, for example, and finally the Plasma 5, which could be in KDE. So I've decided to put them all in one place. So let's fetch all the components that we need for the KDE desktop environment first. <coughs> Okay, so it's 94 meg we've downloaded there. We need to now create the file with a list of programs that are going to be compiled together with their checksums. And it says the Breeze Grub, Breeze Plymouth, and Plymouth KCM packages above are all for customized support of Plymouth, which is designed to be run with an initial RAM disk during boot. And it's got a link there to see more information about that. The Plasma SDK package is optional and used for software de development. So if we just view this file, which is called that, we'll see that those are the packages that have been commented out. I'm not sure why we're not seeing this in colour now, actually. That's a bit strange when we have been before. Um, but if we search for the hash. Yeah, so there's the SDK kit, there's the Breeze, Grub and Plymouth. So those are the packages that are mentioned that are not going to be built. But they're there if you want to. So let's create this shell function again to allow sudo to work within the script. Start bash with an exit on error option. And copy again the script that's used to compile and install these packages
Okay, that seems to have failed um, with a package QCA missing. QCA QT5. Um, let's see what package this was. It's Plasma NM Network Manager. That was the one we were having problems with earlier. So let's find that in the list. It's about halfway down. So what I need to do is I'm going to edit this file. Let's see if anything is tidying up here. In fact, what I'll do is I'm going to copy this uh, steering file. Uh, call it. call it current, then I'm going to edit it to comment out all of the packages, all the remaining, uh, sorry, all the previous packages so they don't get built again, including NM. And then what I'll do, I'll go back, install that Q QCA because it looks like that might be the problem. Um, and then try and build Plasma NM by hand and hope that, in fact, come to think of it, something might depend on it. So I need to do that now, actually. Um, let me put a comment in front, uh, a remark sign in front of it to make sure it doesn't get built. We'll have to build this by hand. So let's find QCA in here. Is that the only one? One of one, yeah. So this is part of KDE, so we can download it from here. Uh, what else does it need? Make CA we've got and which we've got. So let's remove those two. Okay, so we need to fetch this and a patch file. So let's do the patch. Do a set. Fix some issues and then we've got the build command.
Okay, we can install that. We can make install. Um, while I'm at it, I'm also going to run that remove LA uh, script as well, just to be sure that that's not causing any issues. Okay, there's a few there from stuff that's been done earlier on. So, um, actually, I might just. That's strange, that the fact that colours come back again. I wonder if it's something to do with the terminal, an X terminal. Um or well, could be the Malay files actually, that's the thing that's just changed. Let's put that back in. So plasma NM should be the first thing that gets built when we restart. So let's just check this as root function still exists. As root, yeah, there it is. So let's create another shell that will exit with an error and just copy this lot in again and just keep an eye on it that let's just stop that minute. Okay decoration. Right, that's not the first one I thought it would be. Let's move on a little bit. Oh, we're starting at the top. Oh, I know why, of course, because I need to specify my copy of the file. So let's run Bashi again. We created an error, so that shell would have exited. So we need to copy this. This is a bit we need to modify. Uh, so it's I've tabbed it twice, and because this command's so big, the matching files have come up here. So I need to put a hyphen in. Current auto complete, and then I can copy from here all the way down. So that should let's stop that again. Yeah, plasma nm. That's better. So let's see if this one will run now
right, so that looks to have finished and installed correctly after that little hiccup with QCA. So the next thing you need to do is add some configuration files. So let's become the super user. So we've got some PAM configuration files to run in here. And that looks like that. So if you're running X in it, then there's information like the other desktop uh, environments to um, configure it to launch. In this case, start KDE. Um, and if you're running start X, there's some more information there. We'll keep on using um, LXDM, I think it was, wasn't it? Um, but we need to do this to, yes, this is to differentiate between the Wayland and the Xorg plasma startup options that will be listed. Oh, hang on, what's happened here? So why isn't that installed? Let's take a look what's happened there. Okay, I wonder why that's missing. Um, This, this should have run. Right, it's the as root, so this last bit hasn't run. So let's. I uh, wonder if it's because. Oh no, this is, would be at the super user using as root, of course, so let's just run this as. In fact, we need to CD into there. So the install wouldn't do anything because that directory is already there. Okay, that seems to have worked. So let's become user again, super user, and try and run this again. That's better. So, as you can see, there's uh, quite a few programs, libraries, and directories that have been installed. So, that should be it, really. Um, yeah, we can shut these things down. Let's get rid of that. We'll shut this terminal down. Um, Get rid of that and that, and then quit that and come out of that as well. And we've still got um, that, probably means I'll lose my Linux from scratch manual because I closed that window down first. But anyway, if we log out, go back to the login screen, we should have KDE. No, it hasn't updated. Right, what I'm going to do is quit and reboot. In theory, it should find that sessions file that we created last thing to allow us to have the KDE option there and it's not oh plasma I'm looking for KDE it is there so PLFS and we should be loading KDE 5 and there's the logo for it so that's looking quite promising 
and there's the desktop as you see now I've got that as the default desktop on my host machine that we're running this on and you can see the, uh, the status bar at the bottom here has changed we've got a network I icon, a USB icon or plugins devices, a lock here and the volume which is set as so uh, I can't hear anything there should, should be some noise so the sound system seems to be working it's just the um, sounds like the hardware is not probably working so similar menu got some system settings here quite comprehensive settings as one of the things that KDE is known for is the um, customizability if that's a word of uh, the programs it's it's uh, it sports so you can see there's things like um, various settings here start up shut down so there's all sorts of things sorts of things here desktop behavior effects and so on so that's that there's um, applications menu so we've seen something similar to this where various applications are grouped into different categories um, you can see uh, the um, applications we've installed previously and the little icons next to them as well and so on funny enough Firefox or Thunderbird haven't got icons don't know why but they do seem to be running let's just test Thunderbird as well Yeah, seems to be running fine. So as you can see, there's all the LibreOffice stuff, Oculus in there, the PDF viewer, numeric, every word. So they all, all seem to be picked up correctly. There's a settings menu. And utilities menu there. So that is KDE, or at least some of it. As I say, there's lots of applications that can be installed which are part of um, the KDE suite. So you could spend a lot, lot longer um, installing further applications. Uh, just, just want to check that CMonkey loads. Yeah, and it has remembered the last window that I closed. Okay, yeah. So that is it. Um, there's no further packages. I will be doing one extra video, which will be to install install a game. Uh, just just as something slightly different. Um, the reason behind this is is that partly when I try to I got the idea from when I try to install that Kmines program um, there are no specific games that are in the BLFS manual um, and generally games maybe not the first thing you think of when you think of Linux but um, there are games out there there's some really good games not many but um, Steam certainly supports uh, games for Linux if you're interested in that and, and you have access to Steam. Um, but the real reason, well, the, the reason, that, as you saw, I didn't install Kmines was the, the more more dependencies that seemed to be involved and um, it was a kind of on your own thing, which I hadn't tested. So that's why I gave up quite quickly with it. Uh, what I have thought, though, is there's a game called Wesnoth which is free it's not in Linux or beyond Linux from scratch manual as I say there's no no information on games specifically in there but I will install that I have installed it before and it's uh, reasonably straightforward and I think it will show as an example um, how you can 
uh, fetch and build your own packages that are freely available on the internet. So obviously it's something you may want to do when, when you've gained a bit, bit more confidence um, after building Linux from scratch. So that that will just be a little one, one little package. May, maybe one dependency, I can't exactly remember now, but it'll be an extremely short video, especially compared to the videos I've created so far just to install that game but apart from that um, this is the end of the BLFS video um, for KDE and indeed all of the videos um, so I'm extremely grateful if you've got this far and you've watched all the videos and um, I hope you enjoy your new BLFS system that you've created however you've created it whether it be on a real machine or in the virtual environment um, thank you once again for watching and goodbye.